Thank you, and it's great to be here today. We gather here at this remarkable event at a true inflection point with unprecedented instability and an ongoing energy security concerns around European and global landscapes. It has been over 60 years since we first began generating electricity from the splitting of the atom. And it is worth it to say outright, uranium, being the most energy dense fuel source by far, has not so coincidentally been responsible for the fastest scale ups of decarbonized electricity that the world has ever seen. And it will be a key tool for the transformation if we are to take our energy goals seriously moving forward. When we first began the large scale development of nuclear power in the 1960s, it flourished. Plants were built quickly, efficiently, and effectively. These plants were so successful that even today, decades later, many continue to run with the consistency demanded of the modern electricity grid. But after this tremendous growth in the 60s and the 70s in the US and the 70s and 80s throughout Europe, the industry stagnated. And many have been left questioning what caused such an essential source to flounder after these decades of early successes. This question of where nuclear went awry was the motivating drive behind the founding of my organization, Last Energy. And our quest has since been to address the issues that have held nuclear frozen in time. The real reason why nuclear stagnated, why the industry was ultimately complicit in its own decline, simply comes down to cost driven by complexity. It simply comes down to this cost driven by unnecessary self-imposed complexity. The underlying technology is simple and amazing. The electricity is clean and reliable, but the delivery model from how it is financed to how it is physically built has been fundamentally broken. And for the last 15 years, the industry, both incumbents and new entrants, have talked as if it understood these lessons. Build smaller, build modularly. But yet, many of the SMR developments, small modular reactor developments that we hear about, are neither small nor modular. And almost none of it is packaged in a way that addresses the cost and complexity that has led to nuclear stagnation. We treat nuclear as if it is inherently complex and necessarily complicated. We then assume that the only way forward is to innovate around the technical elements, the fuel, the chemistry, the metallurgy, the reactor itself. There's interesting innovation happening across the nuclear sector, from fast breeding reactors to molten salt, even fusion can be considered. And while many of these have very specific applications, decades from now, they ignore the actual cha challenges to the nuclear industry today. We have been accumulating a debt, trading the boring problems that need to be solved for the fun, overly technical ones that won't move the needle on the underlying economics. For nuclear to make a difference in the urgent effort to provide reliable, baseload, clean energy, it must be implementable. It must be scalable. Now. It must come in a package that can break through the barriers that the industry has put on itself by building big and trying to commercialize new nuclear technologies. To scale nuclear power, to transition to a world where we are building dozens or hundreds of nuclear plants at the same time, we need to approach the problem in a completely different way. Nuclear plants need to be a product, not a project. We need a simple design that can be easily manufactured. 
It needs to be truly standardized in a way that leverages existing industrial equipment and everyday supply challenges while minimizing specialized labor. It needs to be affordable and financeable, a product that can leverage the speed and resources that only private capital can offer, free from the requirements of massive government support inherent to large infrastructure projects. Last Energy applied these principles to develop the first fully manufacturable, completely standardized micro power plant that can be deployed in a series at scale anywhere today. We have three simple guiding design criteria. Eliminate technology risk. We use only proven reactor technology, no new physics or chemistry. We accept only standardized components from existing supply chains, from turbines to heat exchangers, down to the reactor core itself. Everything is standardized, tested, and mass produced, allowing for simplified licensing pathway and a widely available supply chain. Design for replicability. To get nuclear along the experience curve and to get customers along the adoption curve, implementation must be simple and the product standardized. Nearly every component to the plant is prefabricated in factories to prevent cost overruns in the field that have plagued all other modern nuclear power projects. Our identical truckable modules assemble on site in under three months. Price for private capital. The goal is to build a relatively small financeable product. At under $100 million in CapEx, our plant is small enough to be privately funded, giving us the ability to move quickly and get online and providing power sooner. The plant then operates for a six year fuel cycle with minimum disruption, allowing for decreased operational costs and affordable power. In summary, we are innovating in a way that matters most to our customers by transforming the delivery model for nuclear power. In Last Energy's Power 20, the product design and the commercial model of development are unified in a rapidly deployable, privately financeable, micro modular power plant. And we are beyond just the academic discussions of physics or engineering. We have begun manufacturing our modules and have completed at scale fit ups of our modular assembly, as you see here. It is clear that the market is paying attention. Over the past six months alone, we have secured deals for two dozen power plants across three European markets with interest in place for hundreds more. From industrial partners to grid scale utilities, the appetite for distributed on-site baseload is enormous. We have seen a marked shift in renewed interest for nuclear as our energy systems struggle to meet climate and energy security goals. There is no question that this trend will continue and the question becomes, how will society rise to meet such a demand? I am here to tell you that we do not need to wait for research and development or the political will to mobilize billions in government funds. And let's be clear, nuclear power is the easiest pathway by far to decarbonize entire countries in under a decade and guarantee energy security for generations to come. Europe can't wait, and the world shouldn't have to. The core technology that has been with us for decades, but we've been stuck in a mindset that has stymied growth. Now is the time to make good 
on the potential of nuclear energy that it has always had within to become the engine for global transformation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. So just to go over the, the key points. So uh, six months, you reckon, to build. In reality, it takes about 18 stay, months. Stay with the yeah, in reality, it takes about 18 months in a factory setting. Right. But uh, the on site assembly is only three months. three months. So part of our innovation, essentially, is to produce small nuclear power plants in the same way that the automotive industry or the airline industry has, where you have a sequence of ongoing builds, they roll off the assembly line. And then only the on-site installation takes that limited three-month period. So you, your, your sort of factory and on-site, you're reckoning within two years? Within two years. So that, yes. that will be a huge change, but so much of the, the time scale is normally taken up with the, the planning, the yes, regulations. Yes. Um, you, you know, does this answer that in any way? Yes, the other advantage of producing the same thing every time is it allows you to begin your permitting and licensing in parallel with your construction. You see, if every design is boutique, one-off, a custom project for delivery, then you must wait till you get that custom license first before you can commit the capital to build. But in our case, especially with our investors, since we're sticking to the exact same design every single time, we feel comfortable taking the risk of running both the licensing and the product development in parallel. And so the combined time will still only be two years and we won't have to do it in sequence, but rather in parallel. And have you done any, uh, any surveys or do you have any data on what communities would think about? Because in so many countries, it's that that's the sticking point. When you say nuclear, people have very strong opinions, either for or against, yes. but it will be that that really will um, channel the thoughts of the regulators and the governments. Yes, of course. So one of the things that we have strategically decided to do is go where the lowest hanging fruit is first. So the countries where there's already overwhelming political and governmental and social support for nuclear. That makes our lives a lot easier. But community, community approval has always been important for any energy project, not just nuclear. And you can see in the design itself, we have factored in this community and stakeholder um, the stakeholder participation. And so early on, we went and we asked people, what do they care about with energy projects? What makes it a welcome addition to the community instead of an eyesore? And we heard two things very consistently. We heard, don't build it tall. They don't want to see tall stacks. Uh, they don't want to see um, something blocking the landscape or the view. That could be for a wind turbine, or it could be for even a cooling tower. And the second thing we heard is, they don't want it to feel big and concrete, like it's from the past. They want it to feel beautiful, like it's from the future. And so this is what we've done in the very design of the power plant itself, make it feel almost more like a beautifully architected museum rather than an old Soviet era concrete block. A museum of a nuclear power station. Anyone in the audience have a, have a question that they want to, uh, to bring in there? Okay, let me uh, just say, I have a set of very standard questions. I mean, because you were mentioning that you have already 12 projects approved, right? We have two dozen, two, so 24 under development across three countries right now. Uh, can you reveal what those three countries are? And, uh, and further out, if you are already in conversations with different governments, you know, you might be Europe, might be the US. I mean, I don't know if somebody supporting that. Is one of those countries Poland, by the way? Yes, Poland, uh, Romania, and the United Kingdom are where our projects are currently located. Okay. And how did, when do you expect those projects to become operational? So time, uh, time scale. Timeline. So our internal targets are for mid-2025, with our contractual obligations uh, for beginning around 2026 or 2027 in some cases. So we've set a very aggressive timeline for us to deliver internally. And then we have about three years, three to four years, is what we've promised our customers. Okay. Thank you said Poland, Poland, the UK, and? Romania. I'm going to set the pair of you 
come up with with a conversation afterwards, I, 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 I think. Um, we're very pushed for time, but I know it's a subject that a lot of people are very interested in. Right. Brett, thank you very much for coming to tell us about Last Energy. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thank you.